In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We come together as God's family on this vigil of the fourth Sunday in ordinary time. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to my God and, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed, and asked one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands, and even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, in this first reading for this Sunday's, for this Sunday's Mass taken from the book of Deuteronomy, we hear about the most important event that took place for the Israelites just after they crossed over the Red Sea. Now they're free from captivity of, from Egypt, and they're free. They're in the wilderness. And what was the most important thing that happened to them in the wilderness? Well, you know, at Mount Sinai, how God gave the law through Moses to his people. But what event that was. What a tremendous event that was. It left a lasting impression on God's people because God surrounded that event with a great manifestation of his power. And so the people, when the Lord gave them the law, they had to assemble around Mount Sinai at the base of the mountain, at a distance. They had to stay at a distance 
They could not even lay a hand on the mountain. Only Moses was permitted to go up and get the law. And as God gave the law, the Ten Commandments, to Moses, he surrounded that event with tremendous happenings and showings. And so the people at the base of the mountain, they felt the mountain shake. They saw the top of the mountain on fire with dark clouds over it. They heard peals of thunder and flashes of lightning. And they heard a mysterious trumpet blowing that was getting louder and louder and louder. And then God, as you know, he wrote the law on the tablets with his fiery finger. But when that was all done, God's people came to Moses and they said, Moses, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire anymore, lest we die. They said to Moses, this was way too much for us to, to, to have a manifestation of the power of God. And so God said to Moses, well said, this was well said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you, Moses. And so God got to work to raise up a prophet like Moses. And of course, that prophet raised up like Moses is who? No other than Jesus Christ, our Lord. But how is Jesus, the Son of God, a prophet like Moses? Well, what are the two things that Moses did? Moses led his people out of captivity. That's the first thing. And Moses gave the law to God's people. And we see Jesus Christ, our Lord, doing the exact same thing beginning in today's Gospel from the Gospel of Mark as he goes into the, into the synagogue on a Sabbath. And he does two things. He teaches about the law and he liberates. How does he teach? Well, the people are astonished at his words because he teaches with authority. He doesn't just comment on the Ten Commandments like the scribes would do. No, he would interpret the law and begin to say things like this. Well, you have heard it said that you shall not kill. But I say to you, it has to go deeper. You shall not get angry. You have heard it said in the law of Moses that you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, it has to go deeper. You can't look upon other with lust in your heart. You see how Jesus not only gives the law, but he interprets the law for us. And then he will give us those beautiful beatitudes, which will show us how we need to live the law, not just outwardly, but inwardly as well. And so that's how Jesus is a prophet like Moses because he gives the law and interprets the law through his teaching with authority. But then we see him, like Moses, bringing freedom. How does he bring freedom? Well, in that synagogue, in that Sabbath, there was a man being held in captivity by the evil one. And Jesus liberates him from that unclean spirit. A greater liberation than the children of Israel experienced in the desert, in the wilderness. You know, if you think about it, the Lord Jesus, he's still doing those things for us. He still continues to teach us with authority through his word, through the scriptures. He still continues to liberate us through his power in the sacraments. But do we, like the people in that synagogue, do we continue to marvel and be astonished at the words of Jesus Christ? Do we continue to marvel and be astonished at the power of Jesus that is present in the sacraments? Or has it all become so much routine? 
do we continue to marvel and are we astonished at the Word of God, at the power of God? You know, our baptismal dignity is really tremendous. It's incredible, if you think about it. What has God done for us by virtue of our baptism? He has consecrated us as living temples of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us when we are in the state of grace and free from mortal sin. We're a living, breathing temple of the Most High God. And we're sons and daughters of the Eternal Father by virtue of our baptism. And we have been empowered to fight because of the sacrament of confirmation. What a tremendous dignity we have. And you know, the evil one is tremendously jealous of your baptismal dignity, and he is constantly trying to lead you and I back into captivity. But we are meant to live in liberty, as St. Paul says, that we should experience the freedom of the sons and daughters of Almighty God. So then, what does this gospel invite us to do? Well, I think it's inviting us to name, to name the unclean spirits that you and I are battling with. And who are the, un, who are the, the unclean spirits that you and I battle with? Their names go like this. The unclean spirit of pride, of anger, of jealousy, of lust, of gluttony, of greed, and sloth. Let's look them squarely in the eye and name them for what they are. And then remembering the tremendous dignity and power that has been given to us, let us cast them out. Let us cast them out with the words in the holy name of Jesus, I renounce and rebuke you. You have been given authority over your own spiritual life by virtue of baptism. Take that authority in the name of Jesus and let us be free. You have authority over your own soul and body. You have spiritual authority over your children and spouses have spiritual authority over one another because of the sacrament of matrimony. Let's use that dignity, that power, and that authority that has been given to us, and let's enjoy the freedom that God the Father wants us to live in. You know, every single day is going to be a battle for you and I. Every single day should be a battle. And you know, when we go to bed, Spiritually speaking, we should find ourselves a little bit exhausted. So, Lord, boy, was today a battle. What a temptation I had today. But you know, Lord, through the power of your grace and the invocation of your holy name, you got me through it. I'm exhausted. Let me rest tonight so I can get up and battle again. And the battle never ends. Because, you know, the Psalms of David tell us that the Lord trains us for battle. He trains our hands for war. That's spiritual warfare. But we have the dignity of baptism and confirmation. And you know, soon, well, not soon, but about in eight and a half weeks, you and I are going to celebrate the great feast, the great feast of our liberation. The Feast of Easter, coming up in eight and a half weeks, where Christ liberated us through his Paschal mystery. So that means then, if Easter is about eight and a half weeks, that means that the beginning of Lent now is about two and a half weeks away. Only two and a half weeks away. We should begin now to discern how am I how am I going to pray? How am I going to fast? 
How am I going to give alms through the Lenten season so that I may surely begin to experience the liberation that God's grace brings so that I truly may celebrate God's liberating power on Easter Sunday morning. So how will I pray? How will I fast? How will I give alms? And let's not allow that planning to wait to Ash Wednesday morning. We need to have a plan in place by Ash Wednesday. And you know, I would also suggest as a parish family, perhaps this year, our Lenten observance can take on a special flavor. Let it be a Lent, a Lent for life, a Lent for life. As individuals, maybe we could dedicate one day of each Lenten week to pray on behalf of the pro-life movement, to fast on behalf of a culture for life. How will we support the culture of life? And then as a parish family, what can we do together to support the culture of life during Lent? I have no idea, but some of you can come up with some ideas and share them with one another. Let's do something concrete during Lent as a parish on behalf of life to promote the culture of life because we are supposed to be a people of life. So with all that said, St. Paul says, I would like you to be free of all anxiety. That's his wish for us. If today you hear his voice, the psalm said, harden not your hearts. If we hear the voice of the Lord, and we do hear the voice of the Lord in the scriptures, we do experience the power of the Lord in the Mass and in the sacraments. If we do hear the voice and experience his power, then let us not harden our hearts. And then we'll be free from all anxiety. Praise be Jesus in the blessed sacrament. Now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one and only Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now confidently present our prayers to our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, our High Priest. That the church may be an example to the world of what it means to grow in the love of God and to share his love with others. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That world leaders may serve the needs of all people with wisdom and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the government and people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us will open our hearts and prayerfully discern how we are being called to participate in our bishop's annual stewardship appeal in support of the mission of our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us may be the Lord's prophets by speaking up for vulnerable people, both born and unborn, who cannot speak for themselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and suffering and all who work with them may effectively communicate the gentle love that Jesus has for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Catholic schools of our nation may be strengthened in their spiritual and educational mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may be united to the risen Christ in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the souls of Paul, Dan, and Jeff, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, through the grace of your Holy Spirit and the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may we be set free from all that holds us captive by invoking the authority of the holy name of Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy Church. 
discouraged. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones, when with thrones we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward, the Confessor, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Felipe, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who work pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy 
who may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God always keep you, keep ever adversity far from you, and in his kindness pour out upon you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to his words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. Amen. And so, may you always understand what is good and right, and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Thank you, Thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who rattle about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you.